What do you do when you've got to cut large holes into thick steel? Well, you reach for a mag drill. This is the Fine Slugger Mag Drill, and it's not just any old mag drill. They make regular mag drills as well, but as you can see, it's kind of got a low profile to it and no big handles on it like you typically see on a mag drill. So let's take a closer look at this, see where it's used, and then we'll use it some, come back and talk about pricing and about warranty. As I mentioned, this little Fine Slugger welder, specifically, I think the model number is the JMC Mag Force 90. I may have said JMA earlier, so my apologies. JMC Mag Force 90. Uh, it's a low profile unit. So for a mag drill, it's definitely compact from your typical mag drills that you see. One of the main things, you don't see big handles sticking off of there. And that's where this little uh, anvil square comes in handy. And I'll show you that here in a moment. Height on this is less than seven inches. I think that's pretty specific because you can actually fit inside of some I-beams with this. And, and we'll show you that here in one moment as well. A uh, length on it is not quite 12 inches, so about 11 and a half inches from front to the back of the unit. And even this side profile is pretty narrow as well, less than four, it's about three and a half inches as far as width goes. You see here's the control panel here on the rear of the mag drill. This is actually gonna turn the drill on and then if you need to back out of a situation, maybe you've got the, the drill bit uh, buried or uh, hung up, you can actually back it out. Now, max speed on this is 660 RPM, and I believe the backup speed's like 130 RPM. Now, you can also slow it down from that 660. I think there's six different steps, you know, so incrementally, you know, 100%, uh, 80%, 70%. Anyway, uh, there's six different steps uh, where you can slow that slow down the speed as well as speed it up at max of 660 rpm now, i already showed you that this little thing right here is a little handle actually pulls up and you can hold the unit control panel on the back here's an allen wrench right here on the side of the drill and that will aid you in actually uh, removing and installing any bits uh, uh, also up here on the front you've got this little guard that swings out of the way this will keep all your kind of your shrapnel and bits that are coming off and chips contained in that little fence area but you should still definitely wear safety glasses uh, and then right here on the side and where our handy little ratchet comes in so any half inch ratchet is going to work fine in there and that's how you actually operate and drive the drill bit so you can see there a really compact little unit and flip around to the other side same area there we can again put in so from either side we can control the drive of our bit there is no automatic feed on this so you're going to be manually inputting uh, feed a as you go so be sure to understand how much force that you're providing which basically don't over force the bit but you do want to put some steady pressure on it for it to continue to cut. Auxiliary handle will go on this side in that threaded hole or on the opposite side as well if you do want an extra handle on there. And then there's even a strap here and it actually threads right through that hole through to the other side and you can strap that on a beam or whatever you're actually trying to drill through. Right here on the front of the mag drill, this little port right here is where this little hose can go. And basically you can actually feed the cutting fluid or the oil right there into the unit or you can obviously put it right there where the bit's going to be chewing away or, or drilling as well so let's take a look here where the bits insert we can use our t-handle here or the allen wrench that's actually supplied on the tool as well this will be a little easier to use and on these annular cutters you'll have two flat spots so obviously we'll line up looks like at about 90 degrees with these two set screws There we go, and if you're concerned if it will clear, if this cutter will actually clear the bottom, it will. So as long as our bit is actually higher than the bottom of the tool, we should be absolutely fine. 
Well, we've got a piece of steel up here to drill, but before we do that, let's give you a sense of what this weighs. Not that it's supposed to be a really portable tool, but it'll at least give you an idea. So you're looking at 18 pounds, 14 ounces. So 18 and three quarter pounds, almost 19 pounds. So might as well count at 20 with drill bit and oil and everything else. But again, not crazy heavy, definitely not a light tool. Uh, but for the compact size it is, and for what it does, it's still a nice tool and very handy to get in those small places. Now what we have behind here is we have a piece of channel uh, that's an 8 inch piece of channel. Looks like it's got skirts of uh, right at 2.5 inches, 2 and 3 eighths of an inch. 3 eighths inch thick, I believe. Let's check that. Yeah, so 3 eighths of an inch thick. Now if we had a hole marked with like a center punch, then we would probably want to run a center pin in there, which you could easily do. Uh, we don't need that. We're just going to be cutting a hole, so we're just going to use the annular bit as it is without the center pin in it. So based on what you're doing, you may want to put that pin in. And by the way, if you want this fence out of the way, you can open it all the way, work it back and forth, and just remove that. And I wouldn't recommend you doing that, but we're going to get a good camera shot here. So uh, for the importance of filming, we're going to leave that off for right this second. So as you can see right now, the unit, I can just move it all around as I want to. Just one hand, no problem at all. Now, once I turn the power on, which is basically powering on the magnet, now you see I can move the whole beam around, shake the table and everything based off the power of that magnet. And by the way, you get either a solid green light or a flashing green light uh, telling you that you're good to go. I believe it wants to see at least a half inch thick of steel that's gonna get your, your most pulling power. I only have it on 3 eighths, so it's recognizing that, giving me a flashing green, but it still allows me to go ahead and go. Now, when I want to drill, I'll actually push the power button, which is the green button. And then I just push the red button when I want to stop the drill, but that's still going to let the magnet grab. Now you'll notice I slowed this down a few speeds. If I want to start this back up at the same speed, basically I hold the negative button and the power button at the same time. And that starts it up at its same speed. If I just hit the green button to power on, you see that starts it back up and high. So I'm going to start it up, bring it down a couple of notches. And then again, if I want to start in that same speed, then I hold the minus button and then hit the power button. Now I'm going to take my squirt bottle with some oil in it. I'm going to put it on the hose. Put my hose in here. So now you can see oil coming out here at the base of the drill bit. Now we're drilling a one and three eighths inch hole and basically speeds and feeds on that in construction steel is gonna be somewhere between three and 600 RPM. So that's the window I'm operating in. I've got my magnet on. Again, I'm gonna turn the machine on. I'm gonna remove our handle right here. That's gonna get in my way. And we're gonna crank it up and go to town. And there we have it. We've already drilled through that 3 8 inch thick at 1 and 3 8 diameter. Turn off our magnet and you see the clean hole we've got drilled. There's our plug of 3 8 steel. Well, we've got some nice clean holes here. However, they're actually pretty sharp right there on the edge. 
So let's see if we can change that. So let's see if we can put a nice bevel on those holes. Get it nice and centered. Turn my magnet on. So now we've got a nice chamfered edge there. We could countersink screws or just clean up that edge. Maybe we didn't need to take that much off, but you can see you can do much more than just drilling. So let's go ahead and drill another hole and we'll do it from the back side here where we can see the panel as we go. So you can see right now my magnet is not on. And by the way, so this shuts off any drill power. This turns on and off the magnet. So if we're plugged in, this right here, this single button, you'll see if I turn it on, that turns on the magnet, and then all, that also turns off the magnet. This does not turn off the magnet, so I can push that all I want. All that does is kill the drill. This turns on the drill, this turns off the drill, and this turns on and off the magnet. And I believe the magnet has to be on in order for the drill to work. Yeah, so the magnet has to be on for the drill to work. Turn that on. Now, now the drill is going to work. And again, like I said before, if we want to re go back to the same speed that we had before, hold this button down and that button down. So let's start from nothing. Again, plenty of movement. Turn on our magnet. Now nothing. We'll go ahead and power up as we did to the speed we had before. So negative button, power button. Give it a little oil. And again, we want to come up under power and then kill the drill. And now we can kill the magnet. Well, you're not going to take your regular old cordless drill with a twist drill bit and make big holes like this in thick steel. And if you do, then you're going to be there a while where the fine, it did this in mere seconds, and it did it quite easily. So this is a great little tool for those heavy duty jobs, but still needing to get in those compact areas. As I mentioned, I've seen these used inside of truck frame. So in the C channel of a truck frame where they're needing to drill some big holes, literally magnetize this on the inside of the frame rail, drill those out, put in a cross member or whatever they're trying to do and move on a great unit for that. This thing works really, really well. We like the port for the oiling as well as obviously you can just manually oil it at the bit as well. Um, so a lot of great features on this and still in a compact unit, especially when you're looking at mag drills. Now pricing on this is gonna be about 1300 bucks for the whole kit, as you see it here. You may be able to find it a little cheaper, but most of the prices we saw were around that 1295, 1299 range. Get you the drill, the case, uh, the center punches or the center pins, as well as the, uh, the pump sprayer, the strap, and all those things that are included in this kit. It also has a three-year warranty, and Fine is well known for quality in their tools. Hey, check it out for yourself. Also, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.